We have teenage multimillionaires flying around in their own jet planes. We have kids, the only asset they have is a 15-speed bicycle. For those of you that have done any research at all, on my website, we have teenage multimillionaires flying around in their own jet planes. And he's the one that had the 15-speed bicycle. That's why I use it a lot. He's not a teenager anymore. He's 21. If he were standing right here, Josh Kim, he's, uh, he's uh, half Korean, half um, uh, Caucasian. But the one thing that they all have in common is they're hungry. Hungry for a better life. Hungry for change. Hungry for the tough love their parents didn't give them. So is that what it needs? You, you have to be hungry? You, you need to feel the pain? Uh, growth only comes through pain. For those that have, uh, that have read about being an athlete, okay, okay, uh, no pain, no gain. It's the same in life. Elon Musk, Steve Jobs, Dan Pena, Ted Turner, amongst a whole bunch of others, all had one thing in common. We all slept in our office the first five or ten years of our business life. Slept in our office the five, first five or ten years of our business life. I think we would like to know how does it work, the QLA principle, okay. the basics. What can you teach you? There's only one moving part to the QLA model. How does it work? Okay, I'm going to tell you right now. There's only one moving part. But it's, since it's only got one moving part, I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt that you can get this. Motivated seller. Now, I know it's not politically correct to talk about having sex with a thousand partners anymore. But rock stars got nothing on Dan Pena. I got more ass than a toilet seat at a fucking bus station. And I was proud of it. How? Because I asked. The squeaky wheel gets the grease. And you've been taught all your life not to ask. To politically fit in. So the one moving part is a motivated seller. Now let's say that this table are all in IT. This table is in manufacturing. This table is in... Uh, medical services, and this table is in uh, construction. Of these five tables, or five industries I just mentioned, you're looking for a seller that is between 55 and 70. He has no line of succession, meaning he has nobody to leave the business to, because most children today don't want to have anything to do with their parents' business. There's no succession planning. So there's got a guy, 68 years old, he's been in the business 35 years, he's built up a construction company to 5 million euros a year. He makes seven, let's make it even numbers, a million euros a year out of 5 million, which would be a great business, that'd be 20%. What's he going to do when he drops dead? He's going to drop dead, right? And who's he going to leave the business to? The hag he calls his wife. And what is she going to do with the business? Call nothing. She's hoping she dies before him, so she doesn't have to be stuck with the business. Why don't the owners plan for death? Because nobody wants to talk about it. Why don't owners have a succession plan, meaning when I die, this is what's going to happen to the business? Because they don't want to talk about it. It's one of the things you don't talk about. It's the only thing I talk about. Okay, so you've got a motivated seller. He's got a construction company, 5 million euros a year revenue, total revenue. He makes 1 million after tax. That is your prospect. That is the person you call on. And on the site, we show you how to call on these people, how to find them. How to find them. And seven or eight times out of ten, you can finance the entire transaction with no equity. You can finance the entire transaction with commercial debt, or as you say in this country, debt. Commercial debt. Meaning, you don't have to have any money. Now, Nyaroda, which I had the privilege of teaching at, 
back in the 90s. Erasmus, which I had the privilege of teaching at back in the 90s. And the University of Amsterdam, which I had the privilege of teaching at uh, back in the 90s. I used to ask the question, how many classes have you had in buying a business? Nobody raised their hand. How many classes have you had in selling a business? Nobody raised their hand. How many classes have you had in leadership? Nobody raised their hand. Now, I'm here to tell because I checked last week. Those three fine universities still don't have any classes in those three subjects. So they're not teaching you how to sell your business. They're not teaching you how to buy a business. Arguably, they only teach you how to run a business. So we have a motivated seller that has not planned, had any succession plan, and then wants out, and that they will look at you with tears in their eyes, rolling down their cheeks, you're their savior. Because otherwise, they're gonna die, and most of the owners that I just described in those five industries are gonna die intestate. That means without a will. Why don't they have a will? For the same reason I just said, because they don't wanna talk about dying. So what happens when John dies and leaves Mary his business without a will? It goes into probate, or whatever the equivalent there is in this country, which means it's in limbo, and it's going to be there between 6 and 36 months. But you step in like a knight on a white charging horse to save them, and that's the methodology we use, and this methodology has been around about 140 years. And the first person to think of this, and it wasn't Dan Pena, Andrew Carnegie, the wee Scott, arguably the first really wealthy guy on the planet who happens to coincidentally come from right down the road from where I live in Scotland. That's what QLA is. It shows you how to go in and buy the businesses for little or no money out of your own pocket and using commercial debt. And what Trump has done to assist you, even though you may not like him, is because now interest rates are at the lowest in 5,000 years. And I hear they're gonna go lower in America. And when America sneezes, Holland catches a cold. So if interest rates go lower in America, what do you think is gonna happen here? Interest rates are gonna go lower. And that's what the QLA is, and it's a simple process. And he followed QLA, this is his third time around, uh, but he bought businesses with no money, right? But, I mean, he did it, uh, and it's, it's, it doesn't, you know, it's, it's nothing really hard. Now, why doesn't ING Bank tell you this? Why doesn't Rabo tell you this? And whatever the other Dutch banks are, right? Because this methodology I just described to you has little or no fees. I'm going to repeat myself. Little or no fees. There's no investment banking fee. There's no management fee. There's no succession fee because you're using commercial debt. And that's why they don't tell you. But then, is it still that easy as it was 20 years ago? Yes. You go well, to the it's bank. it's easier now because there's more money on the street. But you go to the bank and you say that, I want to have your money. Well, no, no, you don't, you, no, you borrow. You're you going to borrow. borrow money. <laughs> Just like you did. Yeah, but, but that was 20 years ago, other time. And what I did, I did what he told me and I didn't know better. So I went in, ING Bank, I asked for half a million and went out with the money. Because you told me you're not going to leave without the money. You don't leave without the money or a check or a wire check. You sit there and you, until they're embarrassed. You go in when the fucking bank opens up, 9 o'clock you open, 10, and you don't leave the goddamn place until you got money in your pocket. I mean, literally. Now, see, most of you wouldn't do that because you'd be embarrassed. And it's still that it's better to go to a new bank? Oh, yeah. A now, new office? Now, when a new ING branch opens up in wherever, okay, there's three things that you know for sure. Number one, they've done a lot, a lot of marketing surveys that they need a branch there. Number two, the bank branch has a lot, a lot of money, ING Bank. And number three, they have no customers. That new branch does not have one customer when it opens up the first day on a Monday morning except for you, because you're going to be the first one in the door. <laughs> I used to go around in my limousine. I'd go to, from branch to branch to branch. Boss, wake up, we're here. 
And I, I mean, I go through the same bullshit, the same pitch, the same, which are all on my site free. And I wouldn't leave without it. And, and we give you a script. What is your legal lending limit? What's your personal lending limit? The, the bank officer. You, you probably don't even know, if you've ever dealt with a bank, what the legal lending limit of the bank is. You probably don't even know what the banker's legal lending limit. And uh, the banker will say, well, I can, I can sign for 50000 You personally can sign for 50000 What a lucky day for the two of us. All I need is 49 5 <laughs> What a lucky day. And we have kids doing this in the Netherlands today. Today. So even since all the rules in the financial system has changed, you say it's still oh, that yeah. easy. And the reason why it's easier because from 20 years ago, there's probably 100 times more cash trying to get out of the bank doors into our pockets now than when you did it 20 years ago. For every dollar, for every euro you put in a bank, they lend out between 20 and 40 euros for every euro you put in, depending on the structure depending on the balance sheet of the bank. So for every 1,000 euros you deposit, they can lend out between 20,000 and 40,000 euros. And uh, when I was here teaching in the late 90s, uh, I had a speech, it was called Holland is not heaven. And uh, I, I was a member uh, of the Damsel Club, uh, and uh, the, uh, I'm getting up and making a speech, and. And Mr. Heineken stood up and said, uh, Mr. Pena, uh, I don't mean to be rude or interrupt you, but could you speak about something else? And uh, I said, well, Mr. Heineken, but why? He says, we all know that, but the Dutch don't like to face up to the truth. Can we talk about something else that's happier for us? And so then the then chairman of ING Bank stood up and said, well, Mr. Pena, let's talk about prostitution. We all understand that. And so, and I didn't know much about prostitution, uh, uh, at least the way it is legalized here. Uh, and so uh, we, I talked another 10 or 15 minutes, and then we retired to the bar and we had drinks. Uh, but, the, uh, but now the difference is there's so much more money. And from when you did it, the interest rates are probably one-fifth as high as they were when you cut the money from the bank. Why commercial debt and no private equity or venture capital? Because when you take private equity uh, and um, venture capital, uh, they're going to want the lion's share of the ownership of the business. The famous story is when uh, Steve Jobs and Wozniak started Apple, they got an investment of $91,000 from a guy named Markulis. He took a third of the equity, and Wozniak and uh, Jobs took a third each. Now, that $90,000, they take 90% and leave 10% to the, uh, the founders or the owners. Um, but it's, it's, it's too easy, it's too easy. Um, and when you know that the banks, 75% of all bank loans on the planet are made the last 90 days of the calendar year. I'm gonna say it again. 75% of all bank loans made in the world are made the last 90 days of the year. Why? Because they want to get the money out the door so they can pay Christmas bonuses. Now, that's a pretty shitty reason. But if the bankers were smart, they wouldn't be bankers, would they? For that very reason. So back to the beginning. You find a motivated seller. Amen. Or more. Is everyone motivated? Because no. sometimes you want to buy another business. And he's not motivated, and you want to have it. Well, then you can do a joint venture. Um, a joint venture uh, by uh, accounting standards is a 50-50. Joint ventures are not 80-20 or 70-30, they're 50-50. Um, and you can, and you, because uh, he may not be motivated today, but let's say he's only 57 and he wants to retire when he's 65. You buy 50% of his business, you're his 50% partner for the next six or seven years. And then you buy the next 50% at the end of that six or seven years. But nine times out of 10, they won't last till they're 65. When they see that they've turned over the reins, so to speak, and they've turned over the leadership and they've turned over the controls and you really know what you're doing, then they'll probably last two or three years and they'll want out. 
But nobody wants to, well, unless you're having sex, nobody wants to die in the saddle. I mean, I mean, you, you don't. You want, to, you want to die and go to where you live in the sun and sail your boat around. And, and so uh, it's, it's, not, it's not that hard. But they're not going to call you. So if you're waiting for the motivated sellers to knock on your door, which most of you will, not just this group, any group I speak before, you know, they're not going to knock on your door. Yes, that doesn't happen. 